Oops, what do you miss? Is that a... It's okay, it's okay. Okay. Oh. I am messy. Sister Priscilla, you are on point. She wants to pray. She wants to receive prayer. I'm all I'm all all for praying for you, sister. Praise the Lord. Okay, it's gonna be a little loud on my end, Sister Priscilla. Just giving you the heads up. Okay. Let's see what can we pull. Alright. Gonna go to the foundational text for the night. Which is James chapter 5 verse 11 well you know brother praise the Lord to you and the family thank you sister Priscilla glad to have you here okay Let me give it another couple minutes and then we'll get started already know the deal sister if you have any prayer requests please put them in the comment or in the question box I'll pray for you on that. Oh, careful, Kitty Pie. You're going to get a cuckoo like you did yesterday. Did you want that again? No, no. Shh. Sit down. No, because she's trying to climb over here. Oh, yeah. Easy is showering. That's true. Alrighty. To play quietly, but you're gonna shower with mommy in a bit, so you have to go to the room. For now, until mommy's done. Okay. Let's see. Alright. Okay. We'll start in one more minute at 9 30, and then we'll start with our prayers for the night, read our foundational text, and um, get this show on the road. Brother Boyce, my man, what's going on? Whew. Sorry I'm late guys. But you are more than welcome to put any prayer requests in the comments question box. I will pray for you. If not, we'll pray as the Holy Spirit leads us. Amen. We'll start on 9.30 on the dot. Alrighty, let's uh, we got one here. Okay. So we got a prayer request from Sister Priscilla. Um also prayer for Carlos of course. Yes, I will be praying for Carlitos. That is my first set of prayers. It's praying for my nephews and my brother in law. Alrighty, so let's get started. So we're going to read, like, I have a pray, uh, L, oh, prayer for the homeless that surround us all. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for the homeless. Let's pray for those that don't have a comfort of a home or an apartment to sleep in. They just have the night sky and uncertainty awaiting them. Definitely pray for that. Absolutely. Um, let's get started. Um, so the foundational verse for this prayer meeting is James chapter 5 verse 11. We're going to read that out and then let's get jump right into prayer, shall we? Uh, verse 11 and from the ESV, behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. That's powerful. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Okay, so that is our verse for the night, to be steadfast, to, to hold on, to hang in there, right? That's, that's the verse that 
we're going to be uh, clinging on to for this prayer meeting and just trusting in the Lord in the midst of all this time. You okay? Need help? Sure? Okay, okay. Alrighty. So let's start praying. First prayer is for um, my nephew Carlos, Carlitos, his brother Isaac, and also my brother-in-law, uh, Guillermo. We're praying for the, for them to have an encounter with Jesus. This acting up. There we go. Um, we're going to be praying for my nephews and my brother-in-law to have that moment where they finally realize what Jesus actually did for them on the cross, which is to... Um, to, to, to save them from from what's to come a, a, a death that we all deserve which is to go to hell and I just pray that they will realize the beauty of God's salvation which is a free gift so we're going to be praying that over my nephews and my brother-in-law uh, connection might be a little spotty just giving a heads up mommy's calling you Kitty one more Aini, mommy's calling you Aini, mommy's calling you Go me more. There we go. All right, here we go. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this this time for prayer meeting on this live stream. I thank you, Lord, for my sister Priscilla and my brother Boyce Moses and my children and my wife and my mother-in-law and my father-in-law that are in the vicinity of this prayer. Uh, Lord, we, uh, Holy Spirit, please fill our tongues, fill our spirits, let our cups overflow. And let us just be in the presence of you and enjoying every moment of it. Not, it doesn't matter if we don't feel like we want to pray. It doesn't matter if we don't feel like talking to you. What matters is we want to be obedient to you. We want to be obedient to the Spirit, not desiring the flesh. So thank you, Jesus, that that is the case right now. Uh, Lord, first and foremost, I pray and plead the blood of Christ upon my nephews, Carlos and Isaac. I pray over the blood over these two young men. Um, Lord, I graciously extend their, 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 the salvation, Lord, that is presented to them every single day, every single hour, every single minute, every second that you stick out your hand to your creation saying to come to me, to repent and come to me, surrender and come to me. You, you, you invite us into your family through the blood of, the, of Christ, through the, through, the, through the cross, Lord, that you, have, you went, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. So, Father, I lift them up to you in Jesus' name. That, Father, they will trust in you. They will hold on to you. They will cling on to you, Lord, for dear life. Sometimes, Lord, we don't realize how precious life is until we have that near-death experience. We don't realize how important it is to surrender our lives into you, Lord, until we get into that moment of uncertainty and that moment of, I don't know what's coming next. That moment of, I don't know what's the next part of my life. I don't know what's going to happen. I have no clue. That moment where we get so close to the door of death, Lord, and we just realize how beautifully, uh, how, how intricately and beautifully have you designed this life, this vessel that we live in. And Father, how also how fragile and how quickly life is, how swiftly it is when the years pass by. Lord, we just pray over these two young men in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they will receive the free gift of salvation that they will repent of their sins and they will turn and surrender to you, Jesus. They will surrender their crowns to the King of Kings who is worthy of all crowns, the crowns of our heart, the crowns of this world, Lord. We pray over these two young men that they will trust in you, confide in you, believe in your word, read your scripture, follow you daily, denying their flesh, Lord, picking up their crosses, Lord, I lift up these two young men. I pray for them to be leaders of their household, leaders in their family. I pray over spiritual growth in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for spiritual maturity in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now and plead the blood upon their minds, heart, body, physical, mental, and spiritual uh, uh, um, uh, indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I pray when they give their lives to you, Lord, when you cleanse and consecrate their temples, Lord, it will become a holy grounds for you to dwell in, Lord. I cannot wait to see the testimony that you are preparing through these young men. I cannot wait to see the testimony that will be spoken to for these for these years to come, Lord, that the beauty of, of family praying for family, blood praying for blood. Lord, we know that 
that we are related by blood, but I, we are more related in the blood of Christ. It is more beautiful to acknowledge brother and sister in Christ Jesus. You say, my, the ones that obey the will of the Father, those that seek the will of the Father, those that are obedient to the Father, who listens to His commandments, who obeys His voice, these are my mothers, these are my brothers, these are my sisters. That is a, that is a powerful, deep, and heavy truth. That, Lord, that our brothers and sisters in faith, they're closer to us because they are covered in the blood of Christ. But, Lord, we can it's a beautiful thing when family and members, brothers and sisters of the family, cousins, uncles, nieces, nephews, aunts, grandmothers, grandfathers, Lord, uh, stepmothers, stepfathers, whatever the relationship is, Lord. It's beautiful when we see these people come into the family of Christ. Now we're going to be related both ways. So I pray over my nephews in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift up to my brother-in-law in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that he will trust in you, confine in you. He will fall on his knees and cry out, Abba, Father, for you, Lord. Let there not be a, 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 a sense of pressure to think that he, he has to live this life on his own. Lord, you say that your your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Yes, we will have difficulties and, and, uh, and circumstances and, and persecution and sufferings for your namesake. But Lord, when we trust in you and confine in you, you give us inner peace but we have to seek you daily for this inner peace that you give that even in the midst of the storm we are still even in the midst of the trial we are still even in the midst of the furnace we are being still and we're being stilled by you trusting in you knowing that you are in control of all things i'm praying over my brother-in-law right now in the name of jesus christ lord that the work that you have for him where he lives right now, the work that you have him that he's going to do, the good works that is going to be filled by the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm praying and plead right now that he will touch base with you, that he will speak with you, that he will be in prayer and in unison with you. I pray he worships you and praises you, and he will sing hymns and songs and word, uh, uh, songs of praise, and he will fall on his knees, and he will humble himself and drop his head to the floor and pray to you and speak to you and glorify you and bless your name father god i pray this over my brother-in-law in the name of jesus christ lord that he will trust in your words he will trust in you you will not listen to a man not listen to anyone else but the voice of god himself thank you jesus for this opportunity to pray for three precious men in my life lord i pray and plead the blood lord they will come to the cross they will come to your feet and they will let their tears flow and they will not do this because they feel like it they will do it because their soul is crying out for a connection a reconnection with the creator that put that in the first place lord so i thank you jesus for this opportunity to pray for these men and i thank you jesus lord i could do this on this live stream in this prayer meeting for this ministry and i praise and glorify you father and i say this in jesus almighty name amen and amen awesome okay next prayer is going to be a prayer for my ministry i want to pray for my ministry um My baby boy is all clean. <gasps> gimme, <give> gimme. <laughs> Look at the clean boy. Look at this beautiful niche. You want to pray with daddy? Let's pray with daddy. Ah! Ah! Let's pray with daddy. Let's pray with daddy. Look at your hair. Look at your hair. Look at this shirt. Look at that's you. You're a shark. You're a shark. Oh, nom, 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 nom. Oh, nom, 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 nom. Oh, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Let's pray together and I'll give you back to mommy. Heavenly Father, I pray over my ministry right now, Lord. I pray over my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I pray over their spiritual walk with you, Lord. I pray that their faith will increase. But Lord, I know that must come with trials. Our faith increases when it comes with trials, Lord. I cannot ask for this, Lord, if it does not come with a trial or temptation or persecution, Lord. I know that, Lord, without that, we cannot have our faith grow, Lord, because we become complacent. We become lazy. We become passive in our active walk that you call us to do. I pray over my ministry, all of my members, Lord, every single one, from my wife, myself, and everybody else, Lord, in this ministry that you have presented in my hands. I leave them in open hands. This discipleship is in open hands. 
Father, all the mistakes that have been made on my part, all the decisions that I made and errors on my part, everything that was done in this ministry, Lord, that has been done through me and my brothers and sisters, Lord, I just leave that aside and I want to move forward in a new light and a new chapter of this ministry, Lord. I thank you first and foremost for the victory of having this ministry exist for almost more than seven months, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus, for seven months of this ministry being intact, for this ministry still standing after all the things that we went through in this short period of time. Lord, I glorify you. I thank you, Jesus, for all my sword sharpeners in this ministry. I thank you for all my sisters in this ministry. I thank you for all my brothers in the ministry. Thank you, Lord, for my wife who's in this ministry, that we do this together as a family. Lord, this, this ministry is my family. I extend my hands over their minds, their souls, and their well-being. Lord, I pray over any new members that come into this ministry, Father God. Let them be welcomed as a brother and sister in the family because this ministry does not operate outside of the body of the Christ. This ministry is within the body of Christ. So we operate within the body. This ministry is not to be excluded. This ministry is not special. This ministry is just a place, Lord, that I I, I, I pray that will be a ground for 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 um, a growth of spiritual mental uh, maturity, spiritual mentality growth, and also fellowship to be had. Yes, we are online, but Lord, we pray in the spiritual. Yes, we're not physically together, and Lord, I cannot wait to the day we do it physically. But spiritually, Lord, we come into this realm, Lord, we come into where the spiritual world is, and we pray and we intercede and we fast for one another. We pray for one another. We love on one another, and that also requires rebuking of one another, Father God, and correcting one another. There is nothing wrong with correction. Father God, there's nothing wrong with rebuking, but let it be done without a critical mind. Let it not be done with a critical heart. Let it be done with the power of the Holy Spirit convicting us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Lord, I lift up every single member in my ministry right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, whether they're here or they're not. I pray over each one of them, Lord, that they will receive your glory and to give it right back to you, Father God. I pray they will receive the joy it is to serve you, Lord, the, the peace that comes with it, Father God. I trust in you, Jesus, and I say this in your precious name. Amen and amen. Amen. Okay, Mommy, I'm going to pass it back to you. Is Izzy already showered? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. I'll be last. Okay. Um, do you want me to hold him while you shower? You sure? Right, I'm gonna pass the baby back to my little boy. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so now I'll be taking everyone else's prayer. So we're gonna go into the little question box. We're gonna throw that up on the screen. No, we did. <laughs> you must have there. <laughs> okay. All right, Sister Priscilla. Let's see what we can do for you. All right. I would like a prayer for myself to stay focused, to be able to find a new place soon because my, my kids and I have to move by the end of the month. And also a prayer for Carlos for sure. Okay. So we did pray for Carlos. So we're praying for um, praying for focus and clarity, a new place for you to live in for you and your kids. And um, we already prayed for Carlos, but we'll, do, we'll throw in another prayer for him by God's grace. All right. Here we go. Who? Oh, can you turn off the kitchen light? Yeah. Thank you, my love. Okay. All right, let's go. Let's pray for Sister Priscilla, who is an avid, avid, um, consistent sister. You, Sister Priscilla, you've been joining ever since you knew about this. You've been joining every single time. I praise God for your consistency. And also Brother Boyce Moses, who's always making an effort. I thank you guys for being here. It's awesome to pray alongside you and pray for you and pray with you. And for you to me. Okay, so I want to read this verse again for Sister Priscilla, because I know this is this is for her and for everyone else that's going through this moment of uncertainty. Behold, we consider those blessed, blessed who remained steadfast. Okay? Remained. That is that is something that they're already doing. They already did that. They were steadfast, and we consider those to be blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job. I'm going to be praying for you, sister. You have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is for you, Sister Priscilla. We're praying this right now over your body, over your countenance. Here we go. Heavenly Father, speak through me, Holy Spirit, that I may pray and intercede for my sister Priscilla. Lord, I am ready. 
I am ready and willing and able and I humble myself, Lord, because I don't want no glory. I'm nobody. Father God, I lift up my hands in prayer over Sister Priscilla, the Holy Spirit. Speak through my tongue. Speak through my countenance that, Lord, that this would be confirmation for Sister Priscilla to get the words that she needs to hear to push forward. You say, blessed are those who remain steadfast. Lord, I pray over my sister Priscilla that she will remain trusting in you. She will she remain in faith. That she will remain in your word, in your scripture, in your life, in the life of Jesus, in the ministry that you presented on this earth, Lord, Lord Jesus, before you went back up to heaven. Lord, I pray steadfastness. I pray clarity and focus over my sister, Lord, that she will know exactly what she has to do next by the the power of the Holy Spirit and in those moments of uncertainty when the, the, the fog is about and the haze is about and there's no clear path in front of her Lord I pray she will get on her knees and she will cry out to the Father in heaven who is her creator you are her creator you formed her in her mother's womb you know her inward parts you know every part of her body you know her mind you know what she's thinking you know what's going on in her heart you know what's causing her to cry what's causing her to be happy you know what's causing her to be angry you know what's causing her to be frustrated You're, you know what's causing her to be content or complacent whatever it is lord you know exactly what's going on in her body you know exactly what's going on in her mind and lord i come in agreement with you in prayer right now over our sister my sister priscilla lord that she will be touched by you lord that her spirit will be filled by you lord that she will know that i have nothing to worry about i have security in the name of jesus holy spirit speak through me now i have security in the name of Yeshua it doesn't matter where the Lord takes me it doesn't matter what the devil throws at me it doesn't want to matter what my flesh wants to do what matters is I trust in the security of my shepherd I trust in the, sh the security of my master I trust in the security of my leader who is Jesus Christ hallelujah you are her master you are her shepherd you are her leader you are her judge you are her redeemer you are her savior you are her healer you are her father you are her friend you stick closer than a brother or sister you are hers I'm sorry, Lord. She is yours, and she has made a vow. She has made obedience. She has put her, her heart to the test to say that she trusts in you with all her heart, soul, and mind. Lord, I pray and plead right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that not only will she have focus and clarity, and not only will she have a place to stay at the end of this month, Lord, because there's season after season after season. Lord, I'm not thankful for open doors. I'm thankful for what's closing behind my sister, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for what you are closing in this chapter. I thank you, Jesus, for those relationships that you're closing father god i um, thank you jesus for all those moments that are being closed right now not lord i thank you for the open doors but we need to start praising you for closed doors we need to start praising you for things that did not work out we need to start praising you for things that we, we we followed you on and did not happen father god i thank you for the prayers you did not answer lord i'm praying over my sister priscilla that the humility will be presented in her heart that she will be on a, in a have a heart check a heart correction that she will trust in you that she will be focusing on you that she will know that my father in heaven has everything planned out accordingly all I need to do is step in obedience and in faith and I will trust in my shepherd because I am only a sheep I pray my sister uh, sister Priscilla would know that she is just a sheep and she has all we have to do is just look and keep her eyes on the shepherd she needs to keep her eyes on her master she needs to keep her eyes on her father hallelujah Lord I pray over over her children right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will protect each one of them Lord in the name of Jesus Christ Lord and not only that I pray for the salvation when they come of age to choose you in their heart Lord to say I am willing to serve you Lord I pray for that moment when it comes Lord that my sister Priscilla will be ready Father God and in these moments when they're there in their youth I pray my sister Priscilla will continue to speak your word into the hearts of her children hallelujah and let it not be a morning and day and a nighttime thing let it be at every single moment moment she gets let her speak about Jesus to our children let her not just fall into the habit of checklist prayers and let's just pray before we go to sleep let it be like let's pray before every single thing that we do in the house everything we do thing we do before we leave the house everything we do outside of the house father God let her prayer life be a reflection of how much she loves you father God and let that also mold her children's dedication dedication to you and their devotion to you father God could let this be a real 
tangible relationship, Father God. Parents and myself included, sometimes we just want what's best for our children in a worldly mindset. We want them to be successful. We want them to have money. We want them to be rich. We want them to have a, a husband and a wife and kids and a house and a good job and a career and these things and that. But Father, we want them to be disciples of you. Hallelujah. We want our kids to be disciples of Jesus. Yes, all those things are great. But that's not what you have called us parents to do. You have called us to disciple our children. Hallelujah. You have called us to pray for our children every single day. Hallelujah. You have called us to show and teach the scripture to our children every single day. Hallelujah, Lord. And I convict my own heart of this because, Father, I am not doing that, Lord. So you're not only convicting my sister Priscilla's heart, you're convicting my heart, Father God, because this is something I need to implement in my everyday today. I don't want to have complacent Christian walk. I don't want my sister Priscilla to have a, a complacent uh, Christian walk. I don't want my brother Boyce to have a uh, complacent Christian walk. I don't want my wife to have a complacent uh, uh, Christian walk. Lord. I want us to have active strengthening of our faith daily that we are walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit every single second that we get. Woo! Holy Spirit, thank you, Jesus. I pray this in your precious name. Amen and amen. Wow. Talk about awesome. How awesome the Lord is. That he just shows up. He's just here. He's here all the time. It's not and I'm not it's not like I'm inviting God. It's not like God God I have to ask God. God is all places at all times, but I thank the Lord that we could be in the midst of his presence, not ours. It's his presence. We're in. It's not, it's not, oh God, you're, you're coming into my presence. Oh God, you're, you're welcome into this. You are already here. Father, you're already here. You're in the midst of us. Thank you, Jesus. You say when one or two gather, you are in the midst. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for that. Okay, next prayer. Uh, Sister Jessica, thank you for joining. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, please put them in the comments or question box, okay? Next prayer. It's for my, my, my sword sharpener, my beloved brother Boyce. Um, I love this man so much. He is, a, he is an active Christian sword sharpener in my life. This man has been there for me. I don't care how many times I have to repeat it on stream. It, it is a blessing of God that I have this man in my life. It is a blessing of God to have this, this, this man disciple me when we get to fellowship and the good times we get to talk. This brother, brother Boyce has been a has been an active, active. I and I know he prays for me. I, I know he he he's praying for my wife and my kids. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for confirming that right now. I I, I want to lift him up, and I also want to lift up his prayer. So, my sisters, if you could please um, lift up brother Boyce, who is a amazing brother that I love and I cherish completely. Um, but before we pray. I just want to put you guys onto something. My wife got me this amazing, amazing, amazing book. I recommend this for a gift for any brother that you have that's a father, or for my brothers out there that are fathers and husbands. Read this book. It's called Dad Tired and Loving It. Um, the, the author is Jared Lopez. This guy, this book is absolutely amazing. It is super convicting. Um, convicted me to the core, to the place where I had to check how I raise up my kids and how I how I treat my wife and it's just it's just it's a beautiful book I recommend it for all the brothers out there all the husbands and and, and fathers and sisters I recommend you get this for a brother that you love or your husband or uh, or you know whoever you know that's a father and husband I recommend this book it is such a great book it's called dad tired and loving it um, I absolutely 100% recommend it for you guys out there and also for my sisters to get it for those guys that need it. They need. They need to hear these words. It is a brother who is transparent, honest, and humbled. He puts it out there. He's like, man, I'm not doing a good job, but I want you to walk alongside me and let's do this together. That that's the attitude that he gives in this book, and it's so encouraging. Um, and I recommend it if you guys have never heard of the book, Dad Tired. Super good book. All right. Okay. So let's pray for Brother Boyce Moses, and let's pray for the homeless that live around in our neighborhoods, um, that those that don't have shelter, food, uh, water, bathroom, you know, these things that we take for granted every day. Um, 
like even my own self like I it got I got I got so comfortable with what I got that when something went when something does not go right like when something does not go right to the things that I have I start getting angry and I start getting uh, um, spoiled right when those things are taken away from me but then I realize these are not mine in the first place these are gifts of God to have a home I have a place to sleep a roof over my head food in my belly right God does this for me daily I cannot be complacent and to think that oh I'm entitled to these things right that's that's not the case that's not the case uh, God gives it beautifully uh, and there are some that don't have those things we need to pray for them that they'll be in God's hands and which they are but let's pray for their well-being amen here we go um, Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to pray and intercede um, on the request of my brother, Voice Moses. First and foremost, I thank you, Jesus, for his life. I thank you, Jesus, for what he does, Lord. I know he wants to be more active in his faith. So, Lord, I just pray and plead, Lord, Holy Spirit, that you will guide him to that next brother. Guide him to that young man that needs discipleship. Guide him to that, to that father who's struggling guide into that husband maybe they're going through a divorce or about to be in a divorce and i pray my brother boyce moses will, will will be able to lend a helping hand and speak life into that family and to and to to use him lord as a vessel for 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 the young men that come into the faith or the young men that are that, that, that need sharpening of of older men that need the discipleship they need the fellowship they need the prayers and they need bible studies and they need teachings of scripture but not only teaching but applying it in practical means i pray with my brother boyce moses that he'll continue to be a leader a spiritual leader in his household a spiritual father to to, to the brothers like myself and also a, a, a father in blood to his children i pray over that he will be continue to be a good husband to his wife hallelujah i pray over his family members his relatives lord that he'll continue to use him as a light and salt so let his salt be salty and let his light his light shine bright speak through him use him work through him father god use him as a vessel to break the chains of many father god and i thank you lord for his prayer request i lift up the homeless in our nations lord the homeless in our streets even closer uh, the homeless that live outside our doors, Father God, these people without a place to rest, without a, a bed to sleep and without a pill to rest their heads on from a long day of walking or a long day of doing this or that. Father God, I lift up the homeless on the streets, Lord, where they rest their heads tonight. Father God, I pray, Lord, it will be under the safety of a roof. Uh, I pray that they will be in the safety of a room. Lord, that they, they can be in your presence, Lord. But, Father God, I know sometimes the things that happen, Lord, we need to continue to pray and intercede for them, Father God. And I pray not only for their well-being and their safety, but I pray salvation, Lord, that they will seek your salvation. They will seek your cross, Father God. They will seek your glory, Father God. They will trust in you, Lord. When all hope is lost, they will trust in you. They will be guided by you, Lord. I pray that they'll be redirected if they lost their way, Father God. I pray they'll be put on, a, on a, the next narrow path not the broad path father god i'm praying over these homeless people right now in the name of jesus young kids older men older women lord i pray over any children living on the streets right now in the name of jesus christ lord let them be protected by your holy angels father god i'm praying over their stomachs let it be filled with something to eat tonight before they go to sleep father god hallelujah i'm praying right now in the name of jesus christ lord that these children will be protected by you lord these homeless will be protected by you father god i pray lord of forgiveness in my heart for not doing more with the homeless father god I have asked for forgiveness in my heart, Lord, that I could have gave a little more to those homeless people that were asking for money, Father God. So I ask for forgiveness in my heart, Lord. I know that there's, there are more things that we can do to help the poor. There's more things that we can do to help those that are in need. Father God, let us let us understand that this is not something that we can do in our own strength. This is not something we do in our own glory. We don't want glory, Father God. We don't want to be praised. We want you to be praised. We want you to get all the glory. So, I, Father God, if we do anything in your name, Lord, let it be for your glory and your well well, uh, your um, your plans, your sovereign plans that you have for this world. Hallelujah, Lord. I lift up these homeless in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Lord. That they will be trusted by, they will trust in you. Lord, where they rest their heads next, Lord, they know that regardless of what happens next, they are being filled with the spirit of the living and breathing God who have made and placed the stars in the sky. I know each by name. Hallelujah. I thank you, Jesus, for this prayer. And I say this in your precious, precious almighty name. Amen and amen. Glory to God indeed. Glory to God indeed. Hallelujah. Okay, let me just keep an eye on the time. Okay, 30 minutes in. 
This is good. Um, let me just see if anyone wrote anything. Okay, no. All right. Um, let's pray for. Let's see. Um, since we're on the topic of children, let's lift up our children. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let's lift up our children right now. We know that the flesh is weak. And we know that our children are being tempted every single day. Whether we see it or we don't see it, our children are being tempted every single day. And the crazy thing is, is that our flesh is weak. We fall into these desires because we want to be happy. We want to have, we want to have fun. And I'm not talking about having fun is a bad thing, but having fun in sinful desires, right? Lying and cheating and all these things. Gotta go. Good night. Amen, brother Boyce Moses. Love you, brother. I hope you have a blessed night. Um, let's pray for our children. Let's pray for the protection of our children. Let's pray for their well-being, for their health and mental state. Remember, they're going to be dealing with a lot more difficulties as they get older than we are, will ever experience. Our children are going to be dealing with the most harshest difficulties. And it will be the same for their children and their children and their children after that. So let's pray not only for our children now, but let's pray for the generations to come. Let's throw those let's throw those advanced prayers out there. Let's throw those 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 prayers that go to the spiritual realm. That that's praying for the next generation. Amen. Let's let's do that right now. Let's do this in prayer. Let's lift up children that are here now and that are yet to come that the Lord already knows about. Hallelujah. We're gonna pray this in Jesus' name. Here we go. Father God, I just glorify you, I praise you, and I worship you. Lord, I lift up to you my brothers and sisters and their children in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I lift up to you my own children in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift up to you my sister's children in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift up to you my sister-in-law's children and my brother-in-law's children and my nephew's daughter. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ over all of my family that have children right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift them all up to you right now, oh Lord. I lift up the children of this world in the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. I lift them up, every single soul, every single youth right now, Lord. Whatever they're going through, whatever they're, they're dealing with, whatever they're suffering with, whatever they're enjoying right now, whatever it is, Father God, I lift them up to the throne of grace in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. I lift them up to the throne of grace and I extend their hands to you, Lord. I pray and extend my own hand to you, Father God, that they will be touched by you lord they will have a moment of certainty to know that the creator of the heavens and the earth and the universe wants to know who i am that wants to have a relationship with me lord i pray over these children lord that even though if their parents are not doing well lord even if their parents are not even in the picture father god maybe their parents have divorced father god maybe their family broken up and the children don't even know who to turn to they don't even know what's their next step lord i pray and plead the blood of jesus christ lord that they will trust and confine in the father in heaven hallelujah Hallelujah, that they will trust and confide in the one that formed them in their mother's womb. Hallelujah, Lord. I'm praying over the generations to come in the future. I lift up this prayer in the spiritual realm, Lord. I do not speak to a God who is in the present or in the past. I speak to a God who is already in the midst of the future, who is eternal. You are eternal God, Lord. So you already know all things from the end. You know all things that are to come, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to trust in you, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, for this this opportunity to praise you father god i thank you jesus for this opportunity to worship you right now in the name of jesus christ lord i thank you and plead the blood over my own children lord i thank you for their well-beings and their lives and for their health and for their state of mind lord i thank you jesus that lord you are continuously showing us that we all we have to do is trust in you all we have to do is believe in you yes there's going to be some difficulties yes there's going to be some hardships but father when we trust and confine in you when we trust and confide in the one who created each one of us specifically, perfectly, and uniquely in design in the image of the Father, Lord. But I just thank you, Jesus, that not only uh, are we made in your image, Lord, but we are, we are also have fallen in our sin. And only you can lift us up, Father God. Only you can break the chains. Only you can um, uh, remove the shackles of 
of uncertainty and remove the shackles of pornography remove the shackles of pain and suffering hallelujah lord i lift them up right now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah thank you lord I lift up these children right now lord that's getting exposed to the darkness lord i pray a hedge of protection all around the children of this world lord when they sleep when they wake up let no one enter into their bed hallelujah let there no be no uh uh uh, uh I'm um, sorry, any sex offender that crawls into the beds of children, Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around these kids. I pray your mighty war angels will protect these children. Father God, I pray and plead the blood, Lord, that they will not get away with these things. Hallelujah, Lord, that these children will be protected by your good and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this moment of clarity and purpose not only for myself but for my brothers and sisters here in this moment lord i thank you and i plead the blood in jesus name amen and amen thank you lord hallelujah oh boy that's what i'm talking about sister jessica do you have any prayers sister that you would like me to pray for you since we have this time let me know Oh, good stuff, good stuff. All right, you just let me know, okay, Sister Jessica, if you have any prayers you want me to uh, lift up for you. If not, let's just keep on going. It's not a problem. Here we go. Again, let's read James chapter 5, verse 11 for, this, for our prayer tonight. Behold, we consider those blessed who are remained steadfast. You have heard the steadfastness of Job. You have seen the purpose of the Lord and you, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. Hallelujah. That is awesome. I love that verse so much. Thank you, Jesus. Um, let's continue to recite and pray over this verse. What does it mean exactly, right? Heavenly Father, Almighty Yeshua, Lord, I thank you for this verse of James 5:11. Thank you Jesus, Lord, you 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 consider those blessed who remain steadfastness and then you remind us to inquire about the steadfastness of Job who has suffered death of his children. He has suffered the loss of his finance, who has suffered uh, uh, pain in his physical body, pain in his spiritual and mental body, Lord. His own wife just saying just give up the towel just i'd rather see you dead and in the grave than you having to be suffering with these pains all over your body and these sores but job was still reluctant he was still adamant to serve the almighty king of kings and lord of lords he said that he will rather live through this pain and suffering he knows that god is in control he has learned how beautiful god is to him even in the midst of uncertainty even in the midst of failure even in the midst of pains lord let us be reminded of job and what he went through it was not an easy thing at all he suffered immensely for the sake of this chapter he suffered greatly in the name of jesus christ and the and it's amazing lord it's amazing lord what you're doing right now in the name of jesus christ it's amazing what you're doing in the body hallelujah it's amazing what you're doing in my brothers and sisters hallelujah and it's amazing what you're doing in my wife and my children hallelujah it's amazing what you're doing in myself hallelujah lord i want us to remain steadfast hallelujah we want us to remain in your hands we want us to remain secure in the word of god we want to re we want to keep things the way it is with you lord we don't want to change the route we want to do we don't want to follow the broad path we don't want to do those things of the world what we want to do is to serve you we want to serve the king we want to do as you please father god we want to do as you please hallelujah thank you holy spirit i pray and plead that lord we will understand this verse in the fullness of practice that you will bless those who remain faithful to your cause to remain faithful to what you are saying what you're writing what you're doing hallelujah thank you jesus for this opportunity and this time of need of prayer i pray this in your precious almighty name amen and amen awesome 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 okay um now we're going to be praying and we're going to be praising God now. We're going to be talking about the goodness of God and all His attributes. Not just love, but mercy, grace, 
judgment, discipline, uh, d uh, chastisement, uh, um, perfect wrath, perfect judgment. Uh, so we're going to be praying for a healthy fear of God, to have healthy fear of Him, to know that He is in full control and that He has our lives in His hands. Amen? We're going to be praying that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, here we go. Oh Lord, I glorify you. I magnify your name. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We know, as it shows in Scripture, we speak to the same God that dwelt in the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We speak to the same God that spoke to Paul on the way to Damascus. This is the same God that David in his Psalms spoke to. This is the same God that spoke to Moses on top of Mount Sinai. God, you are a God to be feared above all things. You are a God to be feared in all things. You are a God that does not play games. You are a God that is very, very particular in how you do things. You are very particular in what you have set up as rules for us. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that not only we will understand your love, mercy, and grace, but let us also understand the well-being of our countenance, the well-being of our humility, and, and the well-being, Lord, to understand what it means to be humbled. Lord, we know that the trials breeds faith. Trials breed, breed faith. Hallelujah. Trials breed faith. Because faith is not something that, that we can just pay for. Faith is not something that we can, we can just put money down to secure it. No, faith is something that is present within us, present on the side of us, and that, and that is ready to be used, Lord, to speak life into others. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for this moment of time to, Lord, to lift up and to praise you and you alone. You are the father of creation. You are the one that placed the stars in the sky. You are the one that made the clouds and the animals and the fish and the birds and the creepy crawlies. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you are a perfect creator. Yes, my, my myself, I mess up. Yes, my wife messes up. My children mess up. Lord, but that is something that, Lord, that only you can change. That is something that only you can do. Father God, we just thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to say that we are in your hands hallelujah that we are in the fullness of God's countenance Lord we just thank you Jesus Lord for this moment in time to worship you praise you glorify you Lord I praise you glorify you worship you Lord all things that you do is for your good everything that you do even through me and my brothers and sisters and my wife and my children everything that you do is for an absolute reason so lord i thank you i praise you and i glorify you lord i thank you so much for this opportunity to pray and intercede in the flesh lord i thank you jesus that i am praying right now over this live stream right now lord that everyone that is joining who is joined in who has left lord i pray protection upon their household in the name of jesus christ hallelujah lord i thank you lord i thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus for all that you do I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus for all that you have shown me in this short period of time and I praise you God I glorify you and I worship you I lift my hands in praise and hymns and songs Lord I lift them up to the throne of grace Lord there is not anything in this world that will give me the fulfillment of life than the one that gives life which is you God and I pray this in your precious name amen and amen Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Let's do one more. And then we close out in an hour. Let's pray for... Um, let's see. Let's just be led by the Spirit. Let's see. What can we pray for our God? Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be praying right now for the well-being of the elderly like my grandmother, if you have any grandparents, Lord, uh, guys, brothers and sisters, we're going to be praying for grandparents. We're going to be praying for those that are old and their bodies are worn down. We're going to be praying for rejuvenation of the spirit. Here we go. Ready? All right. Holy God.
perfect in all things, matchless and above all things. No one is in your league. No one can touch you. We could laugh and point fingers and say this and say that, but Lord, at the end of the day, you are in full control. Regardless of what we do, Lord, you are in full control. Hallelujah. Lord, I lift up to you uh, this time of prayer. Hallelujah. I lift up to you elders in my family, my grandmother. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that they will be able to eat a meal. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they will be able to trust in you. These elders, these older folk, my grandmother, for instance, Lord, I pray and plead, Lord, that they will trust in you, Lord, that the, the, the chains of man's religion will be broken off my, my grandmother, Father God. The chains broken over our, our grandparents, that they believe that, that you are just some spirit, that they believe that you did not die on the cross. They believe that you are just a good teacher or a good prophet. Lord, I pray, Lord, that their children will not be conflicted by this. I'm praying over grandchildren that will not be conflicted by this. Lord, I'm praying over these, these grandparents. I'm praying over these elders. I'm praying over these people that are sick and they're worried and they have no hope. Lord, I pray that you will be their hope. You will see them through. You will trust in them. Glorify. Uh, they, they will glorify you. Hallelujah. Let no st stone be unturned. Hallelujah. Father God, we know that you do all things, and every single thing that you do, Lord, is in your hands. Hallelujah. I glorify you. I magnify your holy and precious name, Lord. I pray and plead the blood over these elders, Lord. Even those that are in the faith right now, I thank you for their service. I thank you, Jesus, for what they're doing. I thank you, Jesus, for all that's being done right now. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray over these senior homes. I'm praying over daycare centers. I'm praying for this for those grandparents, those grandmothers, Lord. I'm praying for parents. Hallelujah. I'm praying for for a difficult, difficult life ahead of me, Lord, but I know that all things work out for your good, and as the same that's being applied to my brothers and sisters of the faith, the same thing that we apply to my brothers who are much older, the same thing that applies to my sister that is much older, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. I thank you, Lord, for so much for what you're currently doing in my life. And I pray this in your most precious, most holy, most amazing, matchless name, that of Jesus Christ. And I say this again and again. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Awesome. I see everyone's chatting here. Amen. Okay. Um, since there's no more um, prayers for the night, we're going to go ahead and close out. Um, I do apologize for not getting on here earlier. Um, was out with the family. And, you know, I wasn't able to jump on at nine. Um, I do want to leave you guys with some words of encouragement as we end out this prayer meeting. Amen. I want to say this, um, that you, oh, prayer for my migraines that occur when I fast. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Sister Jessica. Let's. Let's pray for that. I'll pray that right after I, what I mentioned. What, I, what I'm going to say, and then I will I will pray for you, okay? Um, I just want to encourage you to understand that God is very, 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 very personal. He observes and watches everything, right? And He makes it known that He's watching everything and learning, I mean, watching and observing our every action, every move, He lets us know. And God is so amazing. He is quick to forgive and slow to anger. Okay? God is quick to forgive and slow to anger. Does that mean He doesn't get angry? God gets His moments where He gets very frustrated with us. He has a perfect frustration with us. Okay? He's not like, He's not like you and me. He's not. He's not born with a with flesh and bones, right? He's not. He does not have a flesh that he has to fight with. God is perfect. He is out. He is outside of anything we could think or imagine. Yet he's so personal with us, and he's so close to us. 
and He gives us grace. Unmerited favor. He, he extends His grace upon us by allowing us to even breathe. And for some people, maybe living is not, is not suitable right now. Maybe you're going through a very difficult time where you would rather not be breathing. Maybe you're going through a very difficult time in your marriage or in a relationship or with your kids and you would rather not be praising God for another breath. But let me just tell you something, that nothing is wasted with God. Nothing. God doesn't waste nothing, not even a, a little teardrop. God doesn't waste it. He doesn't waste it. Everything He does is for a reason. Everything He does in our lives is for a reason, especially when we are introduced to someone new, especially when we have to deal with someone from the past. Whatever it is, God is, is fully aware. And we need to understand if we do not trust in Him, if we try to keep doing this on ourselves, try to do things on our own, we are just delaying the inevitable. Okay? We are delaying... And we're being irresponsible of our covenant that we said with the Lord in prayer and in fasting and in, in surrendering and repenting. We made a covenant with God. We, we announced that our old selves, we don't do what we want to do. We do what Christ wants. We surrender to the Master. So everything the Master says, we do. Okay? Just encouraging you all to trust in Jesus to listen to his word, to the scriptures, to, to, to understand that this goes way beyond what we can think or imagine. Okay? This goes beyond what we think or imagine. Where our lives are these little little drops, okay? These little specks on a wall. These little things of dust. Our lives are are when we what we try to hold on to, what we try to aspire to, what we're trying to be. If it does not have God in the center of that premise, it's worth nothing. It's worth nothing. So stop beating yourself up over it. Stop stop throwing yourself a pity party. And just, just acknowledge God and acknowledge what He's doing and acknowledge the fact that He's still speaking and breathing life into you in this very moment in time. Okay? Acknowledge it. Understand that there's a reason why you are alive right now. Even though if you don't feel like it, even though if it doesn't look like you're doing anything, remember God has you here in this earth for a reason. To be a part of something that's so much bigger than ourselves. And that requires and demands obedience. And that's only done and executed flawlessly when we trust in the Holy Spirit. When we do it in our flesh, doesn't work. You cannot trust God in our flesh. It doesn't work that way. Okay? So they're like, gonna pray for Sister Jessica and then we're gonna end out the, the prayer meeting. And then also tomorrow, either tomorrow or Monday, we're gonna be doing the Bible study. Just letting you know. Either tomorrow or Monday we'll be doing our uh weekly Bible study. Amen. So let's pray for Sister Jessica and then we'll close out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this awesome, awesome prayer meeting. I thank you, Jesus, for reminding us that we cannot do this on our own. I thank you, Lord, that you remind us that we need you every single moment of our lives. I thank you, Jesus, that we need you every second of every hour of every day. And we know that we can find in you, trust in you, glorify you, praise you, worship you, Lord. We know that we can do all these things. And it will not make a dent. It will not make a dent. It will not. It will not matter to the to the world. It doesn't, the world thinks that we're crazy. The world thinks that that what we're doing is wrong. So, so Lord, I lift up to you, my sister Jessica, when she goes into prayer and she starts getting headaches, and when she starts getting pains, and it starts getting weak headed, a weak body, weak with a weak will. Lord, I pray, Lord, in the times of fasting, Lord, let you be encouraged. Hallelujah. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus Christ that they will be encouraged. Hallelujah. That my sister Jessica will be encouraged to trust in you, Lord. I'm praying healing, Lord, when she fasts, that those mind grace cease in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And if it still continues to be there, Father God, I pray, Lord, she will acknowledge that I am being tested. And I know that there's a reason why I'm doing this. There's a reason why I'm sitting this way. There's a reason why I get these headaches when I'm fasting. There's a reason why I ha I I'm not reading my scripture. I mean, reading the Bible. There's a reason why I'm doing all these things. And it's because, Lord, that we want to give you 
a glory in the midst of what we're doing, Lord. But if we do it without you, hallelujah, when we do it without you, we cannot move forward in this life. We cannot move forward in this life. We cannot move forward and do the things that um, my sister wants to do, Lord. If it's not guided solely on you, Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. I lift up my sister to you in prayer that her mind grains will cease in prayer, Lord, that she'll be fortified and ready to do battle with the enemy who is unseen, but his works are happening. I pray over my sister's spiritual warfare 101, Lord, that you will equip the full armor of God and, hallelujah, and